Hello everybody, uh, I have some news to make. Um, I'm basically switching from, I switched from Arch Linux to Alpine for some time. I'm going back from Arch Linux to Alpine. Uh, they're both kind of similar in the way of the lightness, lightweightness. Uh, they're both lightweight, uh, easy to, to use uh, as sysadmin, as developer, as hacker. Um, the thing about Alpine is probably the muscle, like libc and everything is statically, almost everything is statically compiled. So it was really a really nice experience there. And you know, the something that really reminds me of Alpine is actually a like BSD experience, uh, Unix experience, like real Unix experience. Linux really diverged from the from the Unix uh, uh, core values, if I can say. It's not in a bad way, it's in a good way. They're just separating, like the BSD separated in 90s. Uh, but about the Alpine, the nice thing is everything is still simple. There is no system D. I'm not against system D. It's amazing, but I don't want to have like system demon for everything. Like uh, I, I still prefer systems. <laughs> Uh, what I pr propose to my friends as their daily stations to use a system D, but for me as developer, I really don't need it. I, I want to understand my operating system and I want to understand uh, the whole process actually of, you know, of uh, booting s system, of setting up services, running services and all these things. Uh, I tried uh, around a month ago to go back to BSD. I was uh, using a BSD, free BSD for quite some time. Um, just to tell you, I'm a Linux user since uh, daily Linux user since late uh, 90s, uh, early 2000s. Um, I had a first experience with uh, something that's not to Ubuntu, Red Hat, Debian kind of thing uh, around the 2004-05 with Gen 2 and I used Gen 2 until 2007-2008. The reason why I actually moved from Gen 2 was, uh, Gen 2 is really nice, still really good uh, distribution and it's source-based Linux distribution. What it means, you get a source for every package you compile it, you get a maximum performance, but it takes time. But you can do whatever you want, whatever you can imagine, it's just there. It's so flexible. Uh, but I, I really didn't have time to go through that process every time I install machine, every time I need new packages, I really needed to iterate, ma iterate much faster with upgrades, with everything with experimentation. Then I switched to uh, Arch uh, 2000 on daily basis around 2007. Uh, since then I've been using it as my main daily distribution. For the last couple of years I've tried and used the Alpine Linux, amazing Linux, it really reminds me of like Unix philosophy. I really like the correctness. I really like the simplicity, the lightness, lightweightness as, as seen in Arch Linux. Uh, the way that I also like was the Muscle C, uh, libc library, which is really correct, really lightweight. It comes with almost everything you can expect. And most of the applications are statically built, uh, linked. You, you don't need statically linked. It doesn't have to be. They can be dynamically linked like on other Linuxes, but that was something that I really liked and uh, um, position independent executables by default compiled. There was like all sorts of things that I really liked about Alpine. And the one thing that especially like was uh, uh, was important to me was having non system D like uh, a Linux distribution still actively developed and uh, modern. Uh, I don't I'm not opposing system D system demon that does everything is something that I propose to all my friends, all my developers, colleagues, uh, employer employees, um, partners, 
for daily use, it's it's really simple, but I really want to understand what my operating system does. And on the level of from the booting to initialization to, you know, to to running like a, a multi user uh, console, like running user interface and everything like a desktop manager and, uh, and, and, and just the whole experience I wanted to ex understand like the whole process that, to, to, to really know what's going on and uh, I started thinking going back to one of my early loves which is early, uh, which is BSD pre BSD especially but I wanted to try something different I wanted to go and explore alternatives to free BSD uh, the nice thing about the free BSD is correctness is the unix philosophy uh, they haven't diverged so much from it um, if not at all uh, free bsd was always my choice number one when it comes to bsds uh, but uh, i just wanted something else i tried a month ago uh, on my new machine net bsd and i have a raisin 16 core 32 bit uh, like one of the latest reason reason uh, CPUs with uh, 128 gigabytes and that was all fine the problem was there uh, setting a GPU driver for Navi based uh, uh, RX uh, 5600 and 5000 700 uh, XT GPU uh, that's Navi platform and uh, it, it's just awful like the awful experience I couldn't set up even a single screen I'm using my computer desk computer or my um, you know multi screens two screens at a time but I'm gonna have really soon like third screen I'll have the wide in the middle and two uh, two screens extra uh, 16 um, by nine ratio uh, but problem there is if i cannot get running on one screen i, I what hope i have it's going to run and work on a multi-screen so then i said all right let's try something simpler let's see how far i can go with openbsd still amazing operating system it's much smaller than that bsd um, no hope no drivers like really tough CPU, GPU, PCI, like peripheral, peripherals, like common things work, network driver works. But problem there is no love for MD GPU, the latest MD GPUs. So now what I'm going, what I'm trying to do, so again, I'm rediscovering NetBSD, reading about the current, reading about like about NetBSD 9, trying all sorts of things like I, I i cannot tell you like all, all, all what i tried like uh, it's, it's just amazing and i still couldn't get it right and uh i moved back to to arch for some time and i'm recording this on arch linux and then i starting like uh re reinvestigating reasons why i'm moving to bsd no i'm I would like to explore alternatives to Docker and to Kubernetes and just the whole orchestra orchestration around Linux. Uh, it's not bad on a Linux, but it's getting bloated. You know, it's getting. Uh, so I wanted to exp to explore uh, alternatives to a Docker and run CM containers and everything that exists on Linux, but on FreeBSD. Uh, there are jails and there is IO cage, which is like simplified uh, program for managing jails and like like Docker and Run C. And uh, I would like to build ecosystem around that uh, and build the um, you know orchestration uh, multi node, multi tenant, multi network, multi like everything. And uh, since 2013 I bootstrapped uh, OpenStack and since then I played with a uh, Docker Swarm and Kubernetes recently I think I have enough knowledge to do this kind of thing 
uh, it's for internal projects, uh, but also for the customers and clients that trust me in the decisions when it comes to a system architecture. Because I believe there are more benefits uh, from these alternatives than from uh, current uh, mainstream technologies. I'm not saying Docker is bad, it's good. Um, I would also like to explore one more thing, and that's uh, Wasm and uh, common software compiled to Wasm and run uh, in sandboxed, isolated, uh, completely sandboxed and isolated environments. And there, so there will be basically mix on Linux Docker, on free, FreeBSD, I'll still have a Docker in virtualization, uh, with virtualization, and there will be also uh, jails and uh, IOCage as, um, you know, as a tool to use jails. And, uh, you know, jails basically exist uh, since early 2000, um, Mac OS X, Mac OS X, Mac OS, Mac OS X or how it's currently called Mac OS, just uh, it, it's based on the version of uh, FreeBSD. Uh, on FreeBSD, I believe I have all I need. Uh, the, still, the main obstacle that I have, but I think uh, its result is graphics. I need perfect graphics. Uh, it has the Linux compatibility layer, which is awesome. Even if it doesn't have it, I'll still be running Beehive uh, Linux uh, because I need some software for for example OBS uh, for uh, screen capturing and doing this video thing and, and everything right now uh, I think I just downloaded the uh, FreeBSD 13.0.0 which is current and I need to put it in uh, USB install and hopefully Hopefully next the video will be from FreeBSD as my new main everyday station, workstation. And uh, I'm really looking forward to that. So until next time, uh, wish me luck, uh, stay good, stay safe, uh, be well, um, keep uh, distance, wear masks and do whatever makes you secure and protected from the from the covid and coronavirus and i hope it all goes uh, really soon away uh, we have a uh, uh, vaccines we have um, th there is hope there is really hope we all need to live with this for some time but uh, i think the future is bright and economy is recovering uh, so there is no no th no need to be worried as we were back in uh, January, February, and Mar especially, especially March. Until next time, stay good, stay safe, and talk to you soon. Goodbye.